So in this lesson, we're going to look at combining Boolean expressions together to handle more complicated scenarios. And the most common thing that you'll need to do is to chain Boolean expressions together with either an AND operator or an OR operator. And they equate to the literal English terms of AND or OR, so it's like we're asking JavaScript a question and then adding additional criteria to that question. For example, is variable A equal to some value AND is variable B equal to another value? So we'll just run through some simple examples and highlight how the OR and AND operator work. So again, I've got four variables declared, A, B, C and D, and they held various different values. And then below that, we've got some Boolean expressions, and I'll run through what each line means. So on the first line, we're comparing variables A and B, and the two symbols in the middle is the OR operator in JavaScript. So the question we're asking JavaScript here is A equal to true, OR is B equal to true. So only one of those variables needs to actually be true for the overall expression to be true. And you can see on the right hand side that's the actual result that we get from this Boolean expression. So as you can see the OR operator is really useful if you want to test a variable to see if it's true, but also want to test another variable. And it's really useful if you have multiple conditions that you want to check and you only need to rely on one of those conditions to be true. On the second line, we're still comparing variables A and B together, but the two ampersands in the middle constitute the JavaScript AND operator. So it's kind of opposite to the OR operator in that both of those expressions, both of the variable values, need to evaluate to true. And if one or even both don't actually resolve in a true value, then the overall result is false, as you can see on the right hand side. So we would use the AND operator when we definitely need both of the expressions or the variables to resolve to a true value. So that's the basic usage of OR and AND, but you can see on line 3 that we can actually combine the AND and OR operators together. And this is where the ordering of the expressions and the operators can get important. So you need to be able to read a Boolean expression like this to work out what is actually happening. So if we break down line 3, you can see we're asking is A and B equal to true, but you can see above on line 2 we actually got a false value, but on line 3 we're getting a true result. And that's because we've also got an OR operator in saying is C bigger than 0, and because C is 1 then that resolves to true. And the reason this gives us a true result overall is even though B is false, the C is greater than 0 expression is kind of taking its place. So it might be clearer with this expression if we wrap some parentheses around the second part. So now if you think of the second part of the expression as being evaluated first, we're saying is B true or is C is larger than zero true? Well of course the second part resolves in true, so we end up with a true value in A and on the right hand side of the AND operator we get another true value from our expression in the parentheses. So that's why line 3 results in an overall true value. So on line 4 there's nothing too complex there, we're just basically saying is D equal to 0 and is C exactly equal to 0? And of course because C is equal to 1 we get a false value there, and because the AND operator requires both of our expressions to be true, we get an overall false value. So this was just a highlight really that you don't need to have a true or false value already in a variable. You can actually construct your expressions on the fly by using operators within your statement. But as I said towards the start of the video, this is when it can start to get a little bit more complicated. And the final line on line 5 shows just how complicated it can get when we're working with all of those four variables. And we get a, a true value overall because all of the values are equal to what we've been provided with. Because all of the expressions around the operators result in a true value, including the variable b which has been inverted from false to give it a true value. So if you do find yourself chaining the AND and OR operators like this, there's probably a better way to achieve what you're trying to do. Or at the very least, you could actually store the result of some of these expressions into a variable, just so that your program becomes a bit more meaningful. So in the last few lessons, we've looked at if statements and how to construct fairly complex Boolean expressions. So now that you've got a bit more knowledge about expressions, it might be worth going back and trying out some more if statements with some of these more complicated expressions, just so that you know that you've got the hang of them. But when you feel comfortable with those, let's move on to the next lesson, which is all about repeating code.